Report on the Failure of the Moriarty Project In 2017, researcher Peterson of Site-21 presented a proposal to his site director, Dr. Chandra. Peterson proposed feeding the entire Foundation database into a pattern-seeking neural algorithm in the hope that the algorithm would find connections and patterns not discernible to human analysts. He argued that such a system could, one, formulate containment procedures more rigorously, two, in doing so, save the Foundation resources, and three, significantly reduce the risk of containment breaches. He also suggested that, four, future anomalous items, their method of capture and optimal containment procedures could all be predicted. This fourth possibility reflected a common view at the time that all anomalies must have a common source or be part of a single pattern. Several models had been proposed for this hypothetical 001, but none had received wide acceptance. Dr. Chandra was skeptical, but intrigued by this fourth possibility. He greenlit a pilot study using public domain documents, and Peterson chose the 56 short stories and four novels of Sherlock Holmes, written by Arthur Conan Doyle. If Peterson's algorithm, dubbed Moriarty, could produce new, coherent Holmes cases and summaries by interpolating points between existing nodes of canon, in effect creating a simulacrum of Doyle's creativity, Dr. Chandra would put the proposal to the O5 Council. It was felt that the Holmes corpus was a reasonable small-scale Phase I trial, but also that the mistakes and inconsistencies between and within Doyle's works could serve as an analogue to issues found in older Foundation documents. For instance, in The Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle, Holmes finds a gem hidden in the crop of a Christmas goose, even though geese do not have crops. In The Red-Headed League, the events span eight weeks, but the dates given span six months. If Moriarty could handle such discrepancies, it would be taken as a sign that the algorithm was sufficiently robust to handle a database as diverse as the Foundation's. The project took longer than expected, with Moriarty requiring lengthy additional background information to function. Among many other things, it requested street maps of Victorian London, spectrographic analyses of 140 types of tobacco ash, the family trees of European royalty going back 20 generations, notes on the proportions of cyanide in the seeds of citrus fruits, and 19th century psychological treatises on phrenology and hysteria in women. After 18 months, the Moriarty program was finally run, and, in less than a minute, produced 1,793 Holmesian short stories, 12 novels, and summaries of these. Below are three selected summaries. Story number 124, The Six Elvises. Three Elvis Presley impersonators have been murdered in a month, and Inspector Lestrade begs Holmes for assistance in catching the Elvis-hating serial killer. The next day, a fourth murder occurs, but also a box of handwritten love letters is stolen from the victim. The letters are found, opened and scattered in the yard of a nearby empty house, with Holmes deducing the thief chose this particular house because the yard is not visible from the street. Thus, the thief's intent is not blackmail, and he did not find what he was looking for. Holmes discovers all four victims stayed at the same hotel during a recent impersonator's convention, 
and extracts the names of the other two staying there from the receptionist. He locates the fifth impersonator's home, arriving just after Lestrade, to find the man had been attacked and his room searched, but nothing taken. The final impersonator is a woman, and she keeps a box of documents in a hidden wall safe. Holmes poses as a journalist to get near her and the safe, and arranges for Watson to create a small fire in the house. The woman rescues the box from the safe, but slips away, disguised as a young Elvis. Holmes explains that the box contains love letters between the original Elvis Presley and a lady of noble blood, stolen by the six impersonators as memorabilia. The royal sent a double O agent to retrieve the letters, but a second party, intent on blackmail, was also on the trail, accounting for the different methods employed. Holmes regrets that he could not have known the woman, but is sure she will be safe. Story number 837, The Pugilist in Black A former patient of Watson begs him to help find her husband, who has gone missing and may have become addicted to BDSM. Watson goes in disguise to a sex dungeon, but is surprised to find Holmes there, claiming to be working on a case. Holmes's client is Angelo Hunter, a handsome young barrowman, worried that his boyfriend, an Anglican priest named Victor Burnell, has been disappearing for days at a time, returning with bruises. Hunter is worried Burnell is having an affair with an abusive partner. Holmes was bored by the case and was about to dismiss it when a detail intrigued him. Burnell had taken to wearing gloves, even in bed. Holmes has since been posing as a married Republican senator at the dungeon, hoping for Burnell to visit. They return to Baker Street to find Hunter waiting for them, with evidence that Burnell had been borrowing increasing amounts of money from the parish accounts, always returning it within a week. Watson admires Hunter for the young man's grace and elegant fingers, and Holmes leaves the two together to investigate a hunch. Holmes finds Burnell working as a bare-knuckle street boxer, and, after defeating him in a match before an excited crowd, interviews the priest. Burnell had been unable to live on church wages, so had been raising extra cash as a pugilist, sustaining bruises to his upper body and hands, trying to hide the latter with gloves. Burnell and Hunter are reunited, and Watson brings Holmes to the peak of ecstasy with a riding crop. The case of Watson's patient remains unsolved. Story 1005 The Adventure of the Five-Pointed Star A young woman with distinctive green hair comes to Holmes, asking for help in finding her disappeared father. Six months previous, the father had found a secretarial job for her, and insisted she take it, working for the Royal Commission for Supernatural Capture and Preservation. It involved working in an office block not marked on any map of London, typing from written notes about fantastic beasts and objects with absurd magical properties. Then, one night, she returned home to find her father disappeared, and a large, seemingly bottomless hole in the basement. Drawn in the dirt around the hole was a five-pointed star. Returning to work the next day, the building was gone, 
but she learned the site had been purchased with plans to build a factory making artificial lambs. Holmes adduces that the father was a servant of the great old ones, sending his daughter away by day while he worked to summon dread Thagaroth. However, he must have made a mistake and failed to sufficiently bind the abomination which rose from the earth and carried him to Tartarus. The young woman, never named, leaves to join a nunnery. At the time of its suspension, the complete output of Moriarty stood at over 13 million stories, and the complete output is available from researcher Peterson on request. With Moriarty being such an obvious, if entertaining, failure, Dr. Chandra wanted to shelve the project until such time as neural networking theory and technology were sufficiently advanced to merit a further attempt, with a moratorium of at least a decade. However, researcher Peterson persuaded him that the failures of Moriarty were instructive and he could use the experience to program something better. This time, the selected corpus is the Star Trek franchise, including television episodes, movies, animations, parodies, several hundred novels, and at least thousands of short stories. At the time of writing, what has become known as the Slash Archive comes to some 380 terabytes, and includes a complete fourth season of the original television series, centering on multiple romantic continuities.